folks, Joseph Sabora here, as we continue to review some movies since October's Halloween month. <sighs> and I'm not really looking forward to this, but I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Rob Zombie's iteration, which sets up as an origin story called The Monsters. Before I get to that review, I'm going to show you something. I got the TV series of The Monsters all complete on DVD just recently at Walmart for only $19.99. A great solid deal. And this show, I used to watch this in reruns when it aired on KTLA back in the 80s and continued to go on in the 90s before it wants up at Nick and Knight and then later TV Land and then finally KTLA back again uh, oh, oh yeah and it was also on KDOC too um, in the 2000s which is no longer the KDOC we all know because that became a, a Christian network called TCT. Anyway, it, it's also available on Peacock. And it's on Cozy TV. So they come on on Sundays. Sometimes they come on at different times. So chances are, you, whenever it's on, you will watch it. Otherwise, just buy the DVD. Because you get all the episodes, even the movies, too. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you the DVD before I get to these reviews and, and information and all. Um, this is an awesome set. So you have Herman Monster right there. You got his wife, Lily. You got uh, Grandpa along with Eddie. <laughs> yeah. And then you got Marilyn right there. Yeah, the entire family. Often a competitor to the Adams family, even though they both have similar tones. I mean, yes, both of them are horror. Uh, the difference here, though, is that they're basically monsters that are based on all these universal monster movies that we got. You know, like like Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein, uh, The Wolfman, Dracula. And even the, the Creature for the Black Lagoon or any other type of films that they've been putting out. Um, and that's how they create this. Just like any other family show that we had in the 50s and 60s, in some cases or another, it's kind of like uh, a Leave it to Beaver type in some ways. Or any other show. So I guess that's how you have to take it. <laughs> But it has a lot of wacky humor, almost macabre in a way. Uh, you even got a, a dragon as a dog named Spot. You got Igor, who's a bat. <laughs> there's a lot of inventions going around, and there's a lot of craziness happening. Sometimes the humans uh, interact with them. Other times they'll just they get frightened of them because of their actual looks. Yeah, I mean, those, those hideous looks that they have. <laughs> I mean, they live in, in 1313 Mockingbird Lane in this um, very dark, haunted house of their own with, filled with cobwebs and, and all. It's just such an awesome series. Yeah, and it, it's always fun watching this. Yeah. In fact, I, I probably watched the show more than than The Addams Family um, when they aired them in reruns. Yeah. But I always love watching this. And I'm just going to show you the DVDs, what's inside. Um, yes, you have the, the back. It even tells you the information and it tells you what's included on this set right there. Yeah, they come out with this cover art. I just show you already. Yeah. 
spine. Um, yeah, with Herman and Lily. Um, yeah, even has some more information. Um, here's uh, here's season one where it all began. And this includes the unaired pilot episode, which this is before uh, CBS had picked it up. Uh, yes, the series originally aired on CBS back in 1964. And it, it does come with the family portrait episode, uh, both in black and white and in color. Yes, there actually was a colorized version of the series. Although I think it was shot in color, not done in computers as we speak so they so now we have two natural ways to, to view the same episode so that's really cool and this is what they look like right here yeah this one this two this three this four this five this six all in natural red gives it a blood color <laughs> and underneath it tells you how many episodes it's included but I'm just gonna keep it that way and then there's uh, season two which is just Herman <laughs> and this uh, set right here does con include the movies which has Monster Go Home that was the first and only theatrical film that they ever did which after that, when when the series ended, I know they had a different actors to play Marilyn. Because even though Marilyn was originally played by Beverly Owens in the first season, probably the first few episodes, she got replaced by Pat Priest. Perfect replacement, by the way. Yeah, because you know, she has a very natural beauty. And she's very hot. And this one also has a TV movie, their very first TV movie, called The Monster's Revenge, which aired on NBC back in 1981. Wow. <laughs> and it got some documentaries uh, that they produced, too, um, where they talk about the, the America's first family of frights, you know, going having in the in-depth of, of the cast and crew. You know, Fred Gwynn, along with Yvonne DiCarlo, uh, Al Lewis. Um, well, first episodes with Beverly Owens before Pat Priest later on. And Butch Patrick. Yeah. And they talk about the history and all of that. How they came to be. And they even show the makeup of Fred Gwen, when he was alive, uh, Yvonne Di Carlo, when she was alive, and Al Lewis, when he when he was alive. Um, but I know when when this came out, uh, um, both of these actors passed on. Yvonne Di Carlo uh, was still alive for a while, and then she passed on a few years later. Uh, back in the 2000s, that is. But it's a great set to own, nevertheless. Um, there were other movies that followed, too. We had um, The Mini Monsters, which is an animated uh, TV special that aired on ABC back in 1973. And we also got two... Made for TV uh, films, yeah, they're they're both TV movies, of course, <laughs> um, but they later aired on HBO. I even taped one of them, but I do have the DVD of the Christmas one. Um, anyway, uh, they aired this on Fox uh, back in 1995, called "Here Comes the Monsters." Uh, this is where they they were running a restaurant. And they had a different uh, cast to uh, play the roles, while they had some of the surviving cast members to make cameo appearances. Uh, and then there was um, Scary Little Christmas that came out the following year, in 96, uh, which had Sam McMurray playing Herman Munster and 
and the medicine as Lily. Also, there was the TV show in the 80s, uh, basically a spin-off. Um, yeah, it was a follow-up to it. It's not a reboot. It's called The Monsters Today. So that means like after the 60s, they, they came back more like late 80s, early 90s. Um, I remember watching that also on KTLA, the same station that they play the original. And unfortunately, I haven't seen that in years. It's getting hard to find. It's not even on DVD. I wish it was. But I'm sure if anybody would post that, you'd probably end up finding some clips on YouTube or so. I mean, this is another reason why Peacock needs to start, you know, adding some more TV shows from back in the day. So it'd be good enough for us to watch. Otherwise, Universal really needs to start putting them out on physical media. Yeah. So there you have it. I mean, I always love watching this show. I never get tired of it. I always love to see Herman get into trouble. I always love to see, you know, Grandpa, you know, mixing up some potions that he's, that he's created. You know, I, I always love Lily, as beautiful and sexy as she could be. Um, Eddie, you know, always playing around with his best friends and all. And he also has a doll of the Wolfman. And, of course, very lovely and beautiful Marilyn. Who they claim to be the ugly ducking of, of the castle. So, yes, uh, Herman is, is a Frankenstein creature in a way. Um... Lily is sort of like a sorceress type in, in some ways. Um, yes, uh, Grandpa is like Dracula, but he can also be an inventor and, and a scientist too. Yeah, Eddie is, is like the wolf man, very young. And Marilyn is like the ugly duckling of the family. I mean, it was their niece. Yeah, but she's human. <laughs> so you get the idea. So yeah, I, I watched them on KTLA. I, I even it was also on TBS too. I forgot to mention that. Um, it happened on every station around the world, and it's also it happened on Netflix too. But hey, you never get tired of it, and still holds up. No matter what decade you're in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm already 13 minutes ahead here. As for Rob Zombie, now let, let's put it this way here. I love his music, okay? And I know he's a horror fan himself. I mean, he really threw a lot of that in his music videos, too. So he, he really knows his stuff. Okay. I love... White Zombie, his his band that he had, he often has his wife Sherry Moon Zombie to join. And he was his girlfriend, and then later his wife. So it makes a lot of of these appearances and all. He later became his own. With other songs that he's done, I still remember the song "More Human Than He Men," um, which I know they often played it in the trailer for the movie Broken Arrow. But I remember hearing that song a lot. I remember rocking through that. And I also remember in a Rob Zombie we did the song Dracula. I love that song. And then Living Dead Girl, another favorite. And he also did a lot of awesome songs um, to give it a horror theme to it. Sometimes they even throw in some sound clips to make to give it a more macabre feel and all and humor and everything. And I also love the song, Never Gonna Stop, um, which I know that was featured in the remake of Rollerball. But I love the song, though. Uh, the movie was crap. I mean, you can't top the, the James Conn version, which is so much better. Yeah. God rest his soul, by the way. <sighs> 
when I heard he was starting to do movies during the, the 2000s, he did House of the Thousand Corpse, which is um, just a take on all the horror films that we got from the time period. So I know he grew up with that. So he wanted to do his very first horror movie in that tradition. And it was incredible for its time. And I, I liked the movie. I really did. And it was really cool and, and very fresh that he was doing. And then he did The Devil's Rejects. That was even better. He managed to get some great actors to join in too. And, and, and any other. I mean this was the spirit of all these horror movies. From those periods. And even ones from. From the. Uh, <laughs> the Grindhouse era. If you think about that. So he really knows his style. But then he did. The Halloween remakes, 1 and 2, and they were horrible. Had paid no respect to the original Halloween from 1978 that John Carpenter has ever done. Yeah, which had um, Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode. Became a franchise as we speak. You know, some great sequels, some awful ones. I mean, you get the idea. And I know the series has been continuing as, as it follows. But zombies' versions are just... They're fucking trashy. And I just can't stand them. I'm sorry, but... Ever since he did those films... I was hoping that maybe he might get his act together and start doing something better. And I know he did try to do something better, too. I mean, some of them were okay, but... I mean, he did The Lords of Salem, Free From Hell, and... And he did The, the Super of El Bisto, I believe. That was an animated movie. Um, still, when I heard that he was going to work on this aleration, or I thought it was just going to be... A particular reboot or remake of any kind like another his film adaptation of it because he's a longtime fan of the series I could see that <sighs> my heart sank um, in fact if it went down straight into my body I just didn't really care for it at all the trailer was not really exciting to look at I mean it really looked very cheesy, dumb, pointless. Um, I also forgot that we actually had um, a, a series called Mockingbird Lane uh, that came out on NBC 10 years ago, and that was a failure. I only had just one pilot episode used as a special, but I did not care for that one. It was really bad. Anyway, I, I knew I was in trouble for this one. Of course, he still casts his wife. Now he, now she plays Lily. I would expect someone better than that. Like maybe, oh, I don't know, um, Cassandra Peterson. Best known for playing um, Elvira. She's in the movie, by the way, just so you know. Except she plays a realtor in this one. And now um, we also got Daniel Roebuck. Plays the Count, soon to be known as Grandpa. Um, yeah, as you may know, uh, Daniel Wilbuck was in the TV show Madlock. And he would later had appeared in all these Rob Zombie movies, so that explains it. And I know he's done, like, The Fugitive, the, the movie The Fugitive. And he was also in the movie um, River's Edge. He's a great actor. And they got uh, this new actor, they got Jeff Daniel Phillips to play the part of Herman, because he is pretty tall. Uh, boy, th this is going to be one hell of a movie to review. Stars Jeff Daniel Phillips, once again, Sherry Moon Zombie, Daniel Roebuck, Richard Brake, Sylvester McCoy, George Garcia, uh, yeah, George Garcia, who was um, 
in the TV show Becker. He would also went on to do the TV show Loss, the drama. So if you recognize that guy, you'll you'll know. Uh, Catherine Scholl, um, who was of course the Bond girl from Honor Majesty Secret Service. Um, Cassandra Peterson, oh, best known for playing Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Always love her, no matter what. And I know she turned um, 70 last year. She's going to she's 71. Uh, D. Wallace, yes. Um, she used to be known as D. Wallace Stone when she was in uh, movies like E.T. the Extraterrestrial, The Howling, um, Hills Have Eyes, among others, Pat Priest from the TV show The Monsters, as we know, all know, as Mar Marilyn, Butch Patrick, also from The Monsters, as Eddie. <laughs> yeah, so they both have different roles in this movie. Jeremy Reeler, Thomas Boykin, Roderick Hill, Mark Griffin, Renata Kiss, and Fred Corey. Yep, it's based on the TV show, as I mentioned, by Alan Burns, Chris Haysworth, and it's written and directed by Rob Zombie, who also produced it as well. And by the way, just for a heads up, <laughs> No pun intended. It's available on Netflix. I just watched it. But it's also on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital. That's released by Universal. Um, you can get it if you want. But trust me, it ain't worth it. <sighs> well, here goes nothing. The movie begins when we meet a mad scientist named Dr. Henry Augustus Wolfgang, who's played by Richard Brake. To join in with his hunchback assistant, Floop, played by George Garcia, who are robbing graves for body parts in order to build their experimental creation in the tradition of Frankenstein. At first, Floop was going to borrow the body of an actual physicist named Shelley Bond Ratbone, who was going to be the head. But instead, he accidentally stole the head of, of a comedian who was a hack named Shecky, who happens to be uh, Shelley's brother. Wolfgang wanted to have Shelley because he was the smartest man in the world, so instead they just got the dumbest guy in the planet. So therefore, Wolfgang had used the electricity to bring him back to life from the dead, and within a matter of minutes, he was brought back to life. He almost failed. And then Fluke eventually named him Herman Munster, who's played by Jeff Daniel Phillips. Yes, looks exactly like how we pictured it, you know, with the high top haircut, those two bolts on his neck, green skin, and he's about seven feet tall kind of like a basketball player <laughs> in a way anyway um, meanwhile when Manny Zoya Krupp played by Catherine Shaw is about to seek revenge on her ex-husband the Count who would soon be known as Grandpa yeah he was a scientist on his own <laughs> but he is indeed a vampire uh, he's played by Daniel Wobuck um, there were entrance of uh, the Count's werewolf son, Lester, who is played by Thomas Boykin, who is deeply um, full of debt to uh, Zoya by coming to her tent under the threat of losing her head. Uh, under the threat of losing his head, Lester agrees to Zoya's plan to have the Count sell his Transylvanian castle into a royal casino and theme park, which eventually they did. So Lester calls his father to propose, but the Count immediately dismisses his deputy son's latest scheme. Doesn't want to get involved with it. So over breakfast, 
served by his faithful servant, Igor, which he will soon be transformed into a bat, just like in the series. Um, he talks with his uh, vampire daughter, who's only 150 year old, um, who looks like a sorceress, as I mentioned. But yeah, she is a vampire daughter as we speak, so forgive me for... I forgot to mention that she's more of a vampire in a way. But she does look a little bit like like any other sorcerers of kind. But her name is Lily. And she's played by Sherry Moon Zombie. Um, which she just had her unsatisfying love life and a disappointing recent date with, with a Nasiratu uh, vampire character <laughs> named Count Olak. It didn't work out. So then... Lily and the Count were watching a TV show called Good Morning Transylvania, sort of a take on Good Morning America, with their host, uh, Isra Mosher, also played by Roebuck. Uh, his guest was Dr. Wolfgang, who unveils Herman Munster live on the air. He was disgusted to discover that he became a bumbling brute with goofy sense of humor. He was doing a stand-up act. And that's when Lily fell in love with him so much that soon Herman eventually became a celebrity. Uh, he's with Floop acting as his manager. Um, he actually performed in a band called the Punk Rods at Zoya's nightclub. And that's where Lily went to see him. And then Herman just fell in love with Lily <laughs> at first sight. <laughs> yeah so they were performing at the zombie of go go um which was a take on whiskey of go go and then soon as they meet backstage you know they all fell in love they just they had a dinner date together as planned at the count's castle but then the count insistently take a disliking on herman because of the fact that he's a dimwit and all. So after Herman and Lily has taken her date to the cemetery outside, you know, they were going, they got married later on and they end up going on their honeymoon. They're, they're spending time together, but then the Count had to form a plan to, to actually kill Herman, you know, with his latest scheme, so he's joining in with Igor to come up with the latest potion or any other kind. And all these plans backfired. <laughs> so yes, Herman and Lily were all on vacation to Devil's Island's Penno Colony, and then later they went to um, to Paris and Yes, where they got to meet all the folks around. There's even a mime. Yeah, everyone were all there, you know, screaming their heads off. They they ran away. They they went for this traditional, you know, film speed, just like how the T V series did it. I know I keep saying that, but you get the idea. Um so yes, the count just came with his continuing scheme to, you know, to trick Herman and was ready to kill him, but didn't work out. And then this is where they have to explain what just went wrong. And because um, they're already, you know, losing money now, they're already on debt. They were actually planning to move to another town. And that turned out to be Hollywood. Because... Um, Herman had a plan that, because he saw this TV show, Zombo, kind of like that episode, um, you know, when, when Herman's son, Eddie, uh, had his favorite idol on TV named Zombo, and he watches that, which I know that was the episode where Herman learns that this guy was a fake. Wow. <laughs> what are the odds here? Well, anyway... His plan was, 
maybe this was a good idea for them to move to Hollywood to find a new place. And that way they'll be able to earn more money this way if they can. And that's where we got to meet the realtor named Barbara Carr, who's played by none other than Cassandra Peterson. Yes. Um, before we got to meet her, um, yeah, they were on the plane. Um, you begin to hear the announcer for the Transylvanian Airlines. Yeah, if you can recognize that voice, if you could try, that's actually Marilyn. That's played by Pat Priest. And I think there's even a scene with the Tin Can Man, which also is played by Real Life Eddie, as we know. No, played by Butch Patrick. Yeah, the son. Oh, boy. Now, they're, they're the only surviving members in this movie. <laughs> uh, there was a scene where Herman was just drinking some uh, margaritas that got him so drunk that he just couldn't move around. And then they met um, Barbara Carr, who, because they just called her, they just called them to, to finally find the place that they're about to choose. She was dressed up as a witch for Halloween. And it's hard to believe because even though she just plays a human in this one, I mean, it kind of resembles to, to Elvira in a way. So that was really nice. And she kind of felt a little clueless at first because at first it was going to be the, the, the house next door that they were going to choose. But it turns out what they really wanted was the mansion. Yeah, which is at 1313 Mockingbird Lane. And I didn't realize all this time that they were in the suburbs. Thanks a lot, zombie. <laughs> But I, I guess now we've figured that out, because it, it pretty much... Oh, well, no, but then again, it was a suburban town anyway, if you watch the TV show. So I, I guess maybe it's not zombies. <laughs> no, but they were going for somewhat of a classy feel in, in there. Okay. Um, so they finally got the place. Um, they kind of felt a little bored, and it sort of feels a little dead inside as we speak. Uh, because they didn't have the cobwebs or anything else. But at least they're trying to get used to the place. Uh, therefore, uh, there was a contest that was going around. Uh, during Because it is Halloween. And eventually this contest would actually earn them like even more money than ever. So they'll be able to have more enough to, to save for the place that they live. The new place. Uh, the next morning, Herman got afraid because he was ready to get a new job. But then suddenly, he begins to spot like all the neighbors around in the suburbs that he got totally frightened. Like, who would have thought? And usually the humans would, would be frightened against him, but maybe that wasn't the case. So he couldn't go... Therefore, Lester had finally came back, and then they found out that now he took care of all the problems they had to be solved, and now he finally received a check. Now they're rich. Yes, Herman, Lily, and the Count are all rich, so now they can finally stay at Markingbird Lane. To, to find a new home, to find a new life. And then soon they'll be able to have their son, Eddie, and then they'll probably bring in Marilyn to join. And that's how the series is going to be. And yes, at the end of the movie, um, we begin to see exactly the most familiar intro, which is from the second season, by the way. And they try to recapture that, that spirit, you know, where Herman just crashes into the door, you know, getting ready to work, and then next you get to see Lily coming in, and then Grandpa, you know, taking in the shovel when he was about to enter, and then 
you know. Why well, they put the familiar theme from that season. Yeah. Well, I know Rob Zombie tried so hard to capture the spirit of the TV series, but he really failed to do so because the humor is incredibly lame. Um, he obviously doesn't know anything about, you know, the humor that we had in the TV series. He doesn't even know how to do anything right whatsoever. And I know it's an origin story, but I think he could have done so much better. I know it's not shot in black and white, as he was going to originally attend to. But apparently he's... I guess Universal had uh, their head in the bucket and they decided, okay, let's just go for this color scheme instead. Because then again, you know, they were in color too. There was in, in one of the later, you know, TV movies and theatrical films and all that. So it's okay, but it's just, they could have gone for the style of the 60s series, just being black and white originally before color. They just didn't do that. And some of the sets were, well, it gave it a bit of a Transylvanian feel to it. I'll give you that. Um, and it does have its goofy and silly moments here and there, which can work if, if that's the case. Um, but not quite. Um, the colors are pretty distracting all the way through. Um, there's like a blend of a red, green, um, Violet all around. There's too many tilted shots of all these camera angles here and there. There are background scenes where where they show the hearts, um, the hip, the hypnotized rolls, even the um, the thunderbolts too, uh, all in there. And there's just too many. Um, too many other scenes that just feels so off. I don't know what Rob was thinking here. Um, the performances, give or take, were okay. Although Sherry Moon Zombie was miscast as Lily. Again, Cassandra Peterson would have been perfect for that role. I mean, even if she's in her 70s, she could still play that role. I mean, it, it would have been pretty much like Elvira in a way. I mean, come on, man. How do they failed on that level? But I, I guess we had to go her her natural ways to play the, a secondary character or a, supporting characters are all <sighs> whatever. Uh, Jeff Daniel Phillips in the role of Herman. Uh, I just I tried. He was I mean he was fine, but. It's just his voice just sounds so uh, so whiny, in a way. Uh, he doesn't have that deep voice that Fred Gwynn had. I mean, even in the other monster movies when Fred Gwynn wasn't playing them. They got the deep voice. So how come they couldn't do that? It doesn't make sense. Uh, Daniel Wolbuck, however, was great. I'll give you that as the count. Um, soon be Grandpa. Um, at least he got the spirit, I'll give you that. But I know he's pretty jealous because of his dim windedness the way he's acting. Like, he's always wanted to get even with Herman, and I know that's always the case. Uh, Richard Brake was, was great, I'll give you that, as, uh, Dr. Wolfgang and George Garcia is a dope as flute, but hey, it's, it's kind of cool to go for that style. And uh, all the other actors are, are fine. But other than that, though, uh, I, I didn't buy the humor in this movie. It just it, It's just so awful. Some of them didn't make any sense. I know they try to capture the spirit, but no dice. Also, the style of the film was 
it looked like it was shot on digital videotape in some ways. I mean, it has that 60 frames per second of all the movements around. Um, and then and then the way their mannerisms are too, like they always do the shakiness too, like every time they do this and do that with the characters. I mean, especially Lily, I mean, she's doing a lot of that in the movie, doing this and doing that, you know, the, all that shakiness. Like, come on, that's not how you do your performance like this, is shaking your, your body like that, <laughs> using your own form of body language. Okay. I mean, come on, I didn't see that in the show. I mean, I've seen other shaking this at, at times, or even the laugh or the goofiness, all that. Or even when they knock themselves out and the camera angle starts shaking like it's an earthquake. Yeah, I mean, this is what they did here. And the fact that this movie is getting such a pass these days, I mean, it only had 49% of Rotten Tomatoes. Getting mixed reviews. I'm sorry. Well, the Adams Family animated movies that we got um, in 2019 and last year, you know, at least they captured the spirit. I mean, yes, there was a lot of this unnecessary stuff in there. But they knew what they were doing. And I did like the animation style that they went for. You know, they, they give those two movies a lot of, a lot of shit, but yet, apparently, they, they give this one a little bit of a pass. Uh, hey, but don't worry, there are a slew load of haters on this one. Believe me. And I'm one of them. I know they had to go for natural ways of the story and all the love and the and every and all the the troubles that they were having. I did not see any of that in this version. Even if it's in black and white, um, it still looks just awful. It's just going to look even much worse. I hate to say that, but because even though I love black and white and color and it's always great to see the dark german expressionism in there it's not going to save it even if you try to do a fan edit of this film it's not going to do much because it's just it's just not worth your time i'm sorry i mean rob zombie can do whatever he can in his life and he can do whatever he wants and i respect that but a bad movie is a bad movie. You just can't fix it unless you can try. Or if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't know. I, I could have imagined someone else would have done a better job and and at least they knew would have they, they probably have the true passion to make a monstrous movie just right. Especially for its origin story and its dedication to the actors and everyone involved. And, and they try to do what they can, but it's not worth it. It, it almost makes Mockingbird Lane, the NBC uh, pilot series, which was going to be, but is now special, look, look like a masterpiece. It's that awful. What's the point? So I say, avoid it if you must. In fact, I think another great thing to say is that it just makes the Halloween remakes look like look like enjoyable trash. Ah, whatever, forget it. Anyway. That's the monsters that Rob Zombie did an adoration and bastardization of it. And I give the movie one star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.